genetic studies where they just look for mutants for human uh, phenotypes, they were able to identify a core pathway that's required for apoptotic death. So step three um, is a gene and the protein that, it's made, that it makes is called the caspase. So it's just a, a protease that chops up other cells and that is the most known downstream effector that's required for cell death. And then the other genes that are required in the black, these are the scaling genes, um, you have set three, set four, set nine, and then these two upstream genes. And what was amazing is that identifying these genes first in the worm led um, to the identification that this pathway is completely conserved uh, throughout all medicines. So even in us, this is how uh, apoptosis uh, is executed. So what we found in the worm is um, holds true for us as well. So this is why um, we use animals, we use uh, organisms such as sea elegans as a model organism because we have the expectation that whatever we learn in the worm would also provide insight into humans and other organisms. So, um, okay, so just to switch gears a little bit, this is kind of the uh, classic uh, cell death pathway, um, a beautiful example of how a model organism gave us insight into how cell that, cell that works across many uh, atoms. There's other ways that cells can die. So apoptosis is the only one way. Then I'll define apoptosis as that it's cascades and iron. So it needs that set free gene um, to, uh, uh, to function. So just to categorize uh, cell death, you have apoptosis and there's non-apoptotic non dying cells. And this is what my uh, thesis project has been on, is studying a non-apoptotic cell death in the worm. And the cell that I study, it's actually one cell and it has a name and it's called a linker cell. So a linker cell um, is specific to the male worm and it's a very interesting gene. It is born in the second larval stage in the center of the animal and it leads to the migration of the male gonad so the male gonad is the, the fast efforts. And it follows this, um, this stereotypical migration path. So this is, this is the head and this is the, this is the tail. Um, so the migration path is, uh, is along this, this pathway. And so it reaches the tail, and then as it becomes an adult, the linker cell dies. And so um, it's a very interesting cell to study, partly because it's, it's, it's very large. Um, and that it lives a very long time compared to the other cells in the worm. So we also know that um, it's, it dies non apoptotic So here I'm just showing you evidence that um, the known apoptotic pathway, so for the said free protein, does not, is not involved in the liver cell death. So here, if you look at it, said free is um, what this means is that this is a set free mutant. So set free cannot function properly. Uh, and so when set free is gone, the labor cell still dies normally. So by having no labor cell survival, this means that the labor cell dies normally. So again, this just to show you um, some images that this is in C. elegans in apoptotic corpse has a very distinct morphology in that this is, this is the outline of the cell. This is an um, electron micrograph of the cell, so very high resolution. Um, uh, so this is the outline of the cell, and what happens when the cell dies um, with caspases is that the, um, you have a lot of changes in the nucleus. So here this is the outline of the nucleus. The nucleus, um, all the DNA um, from within condense and form a lot of dark splotches here. Um, so there's a lot of dark regions compared to light regions. Um, and then the cell shrinks, um, so you get a compacted cytoplasm, uh, as well as condensed chromatin. Now this is just a liver cell, and this here is the outline, this is the outline of the liver cell. Um, and what you can see is that there's really not so much changes in the nucleus, 
but there's a lot more changes to the side plot. So you have um, these empty white structures, so um, these are probably swollen organelles. Um, so you have these white structures, again, swollen mitochondria, and the key feature is that you have this indented nucleus. So this is, again, just to show that you have a biotic cell death, and then the liver cell is um, uses another non non apoptotic pathway, but we don't know what the genes are. So that was um, that's what I've been studying. And one way to study um, one way to study um, how how the genes that are required for the liver cell to die is to look for mutants and. What I did was I used um, RNA interference. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but that's, um, that's just a method to be able to um, turn off gene function by degrading the mRNA so proteins are never made. So it's just a way to knock down, um, knock down proteins. So I did uh, the massive screen, which I looked at uh, over 18,000 single wells. Um, and then on the place in which I found a surviving liver cell, then I called that a hit. So my goal was to identify adult males with surviving liver cell. So the one of the genes that I identified um, is called PQN41. So PQN41, as you can see, this is wild type. So in wild type, all the liver cells die. So there's no surviving liver cell. When PQN41 uh, is knocked down by RNAi, then I get about 20% liver cell survival. And in another another way of perturbing PQN41 function um, is it's by a genetic mutant, and again, it has a similar phenotype, so um, about 20% of liver cells survive inappropriately. And so I know that one of the things that you want to do after you identify genes is to know where it's expressed. So this uh, this gene, PGN41, is expressed in the liver cells. So um, what we can do in CLB is they're transparent. We can take a DNA element and um, use it to GFP, which is a fluorescent protein, <coughs> and inject it into worms. And then wherever we see GFP is uh, a proxy for where this gene is, uh, is normally expressed. So here, uh, this tells me that uh, PQN41 is expressed in a dying liver cell. Um, so this is here. The white is just the visual uh, expression. So what is PQN41? It's actually uh, a polyglutamine UP protein. This is uh, it's a huge protein. And you can see all these Qs are glutamine, so that's a specific amino acid. Um, and I don't know if any of you have heard of polyglutamines, but they're often associated with neurodegeneration. And so this is a list of, um, of different diseases that are caused uh, by polyglutamine proteins. And what, um, what I want to show you here is that, again, just looking at the morphology, um, you have a linker cell corpse, and as I showed you before, it has um, an index nucleus, and one uh, polyglutamine disease called Huntington, uh, dying cells <coughs> in Huntington uh, animals have a their nucleus. So having this similar morphology um, indicates to us that there probably is an underlying genetic requirement for both of these. One, a normally dying cell, and in this case, uh, a pathologically dying cell. And so this is just kind of put it in perspective. Um, the liver cell and PQN41 is required for it to die, and that this is uh, a normal cell death pathway, and that we know that polyglutamine expansion proteins are required uh, for neurodegeneration, and perhaps that this pathway is um, the way these cells are dying is tapping into um, kind of a fundamental cell death pathway that can <coughs> development. So um, I think I'll end it here. Just want these are. University from, uh, from the East River and uh, these are people in our life.
hopefully you have become away with why we study C. elegans and why the cell death is important. Uh, so are there any questions? So there, are, so this this one is not, but there are um, related nematode species that are parasitic. Yeah, Thank you. 